morning. Good morning. Oh, there we go. Good morning and welcome. And one, two, mystical teachings from the Tanya. Rabbi Ronnie Klein coming to you from Chabad Zichron Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We say good morning, as we say good morning every morning to Alan in snowy Montreal, in the suburbs, in Dollard. Welcome. TJ in Australia. I'm sure it's not snowing there. We are blessed with some snow today. Uh, it's not really sticking, but it's falling. Uh, John in North Carolina, Shalom, and uh, Davida and Liva in New York, where I'm sure it's not snowing. Um, Robert in Boston, welcome. Irma in St. Martin, good morning. June in Australia, good evening. Diane is with us from L London, Ontario. Welcome. And Boca Tov Tarina in Colorado. Darren in the Philippines, good evening. Uh, Reeves, Shalom. Virginia in Calgary. Did we get the Calgary snow here in Montreal? Or does Calgary also have their own? <laughs> Ken is with us from Colorado. Good morning, Miriam. Also from Colorado. Wow, lots for, a lot from Colorado today. Um, who else is with us? From Scranton, Pennsylvania. Susan is with us. Good morning to uh, Paula and Greg in Bakersfield, California. Tony in Costa Rica. Blessings. Very good morning to you. Elaine in Bokotov, and you in Georgia. Daisy is with us in the holy city of Jerusalem. Welcome. Omi in Peru. Bokotov. Leia is with us in Fort Myers, Florida. David, welcome. Michael in Crown Heights. Or Michel, oh no, that's Michal in Crown Heights. Bokotov. Who else is uh, here with us? Florence in Montreal. Welcome. Powix in. The Philippines, Dina in Brooklyn, beautiful. Instagram we have with us, Hamid from Dubai. Um, Mon Voyage, Violet, Boketov, um, can't make up some of the other names over here, Daniel, Penelope, uh, Spanish Jewess. Um, Dana, Beryl, Sina, M. Batia. Okay, folks. We are beginning a new section, uh, or I mean, not a new section, but a, a new chapter at least. And it's a few chapters, this um, teachings. And in one word in Hebrew, can mine like water is a reflection. It means reciprocal, a reciprocal form of love. Let us understand. So the alternative begins uh, the chapter actually by saying that there's yet another straight path um, that's, that is uh, applicable and capable for all of us. And it's karav, karav, ma'id, ma'id, very, very close to us. And it's not a very distant thing that we can kindle this love that's hidden in our heart. We already have it. And it can become something that becomes, um, you know, very powerful, uh, flame in our heart that we can connect um, in a great devotion in an absolute and, and an absolute truth you know some of the kinds of connections that we've spoken of previously they weren't an absolute truth you know that you're ready to uh, devote more than life itself to um, to God that, that, that's not an absolute truth uh, I mean it's absolute truth of our soul but not absolute truth that we could live with but this is something absolute truth and it's uh, based on a uh, teachings from King Solomon that King Solomon says is water mirrors the face to a face, right? Very simply put, when you look in the water, there's a reflection of yourself, right? You look in a mirror, you have a reflection of yourself. Okay, that was not great wisdom, obviously. What's the great wisdom? Well, the same thing as the heart of an individual. What you reflect to and what you show to another that is the reflection that you will get back. That which will be reciprocated. So if you show a real angry face, you're probably going to get not a smiley face back, but uh, you know, similar kind of uh, negativity. If you show a, a warmth, 
right? So especially a person who has a, a good friend and they show a warm, caring countenance, a love. You show a love to another, what's that going to awaken in them? They're going to reflect back love towards you. Um, and that is obviously someone who, um, you know, you have a, a, a common quality with and someone you feel close to and you show them love. They're going to, for sure, going to show you back love. Um, unless I guess something's on their heart, but you know, can I upon him? upon him so what we show is what we we're going to get re reciprocated back which obviously right there alone that teaches us so much about how we have to engage other people um, what we present is what we're going to get reciprocated back so that alone you know dayenu uh, is a great teaching but that was uh, the teachings of King Solomon. The Altar Rebbe now takes that uh, into a metaphor, into a much more, prof well, I don't know, or a deeper place. It says, how much more so, and this is a metaphor, imagine a mighty king who rules over many a region, many a country, and is out on a ride, you know, with the, with the princesses, with the ministers, who take care of his um, take care of his um, his country? You know, the minister of agriculture, the minister of defense, the minister of you know this and that. So you imagine that they have a, a great place in in his heart, seemingly. Well, but yet now he comes and he finds this commoner who's living on a dung hill, who is like clothes that are not exactly, you know, beautiful clothes, quite the contrary, living on, in rags on a dung hill, smells to high heaven, and this king gets off his uh, horse and comes over to the commoner, who's uh, there and actually invites him come to join him and not just to join him to be part of the ministers and the princes whatever but to bring him back to his um, place of glory to his palace right so he, he takes him from this place of where he's his dung he'll brings him to his palace his royal palace and in the royal palace you know the the ministers are usually not in the most inner chambers, but in the outer chambers because they're dealing with, you know, whatever things that they're dealing with in the country, um, but not in the innermost chamber. That's only for the closest people. And what does um, this king do? He brings this person, this commoner who was on the dung hill, and brings him into the inner chamber and has a very uh, close relationship and companionship with this individual and embracing this individual totally. Now, remember, this is a metaphor, right? You might say, well, oh, when did this ever happen? Well, we'll see from the analog. Not today. Today we're just a very brief class um, of the metaphor. But just think of what would the response be of this commoner who is living, you know, from meal to meal, living you know in a destitute place and destitute mind and heart set and now is brought into the inner chamber of the king what would the response be if you're shown and showered such love when it's not something due to you think about it when the king would shower love towards the ministers what are they going to think huh well listen i'm the minister of agriculture i've got the brains of the organization over here i know how to uh, administer appropriately that there should be great produce from all of our um, peasants that work on the fields and you know that brings a lot of wealth to our king um so that person's going to feel well you know the fact that i'm showered love obviously i deserve it but this commoner doesn't feel that way totally undeserve it and yet I'm being showered with this love from this king. 
So what would the reflection be? Reciprocate with a double and redoubled um, love back towards the king because you feel the humility um, of I'm undeserved and yet look what I've got. Um, that even a person has a heart of stone to be able to arouse themselves. That, that heart of stone will melt, surely, in a soulful longing to show and to connect to the king with great love. That's the metaphor. What is the analog? That's going to be tomorrow's class and other classes uh, henceforth. This is very powerful. Um, powerful because um, when you think this way, uh, about ourselves collectively it's going to be collectively of the Jewish people collective and individually as a person in our connection to God um, it, it makes it as we see from the analogy and the metaphor uh, something that's not going to be too difficult to be able to reciprocate on the contrary the greater you are probably the more difficult it'll be to reciprocate why undeserving of the love the less you are right the more you're going to feel that you are humble in spirit and reciprocate the love because i'm not deserving of such great love it's a very powerful idea again that's you know the, it's a very short class and just a metaphor today but um again what we show others is going to be what is shown to us what god shows us hopefully we can um show that back any questions any comments um dana barrel sina batya um hi rabbi boker oh vilma yes can you see me no, that's weird. Never saw that before. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a weird glitch. Sometimes people come into rooms and like you don't see them. You don't see them. But we hear you. Most importantly, <laughs> we only see an icon, but we hear you. <laughs> Go ahead, Vilma. So, um, I love this metaphor of the the reflection in the mirror um, out of the water because the heavens and the waters are reflected and on really beautiful clear days they're a perfect reflection like it's just so beautiful as a metaphor yeah but it you know to me it speaks to god and our relationship to this world but doesn't always translate with human interactions um, because humans why, are not, why? Why would you say that? <laughs> because humans are not predictable that way, like perfect reflections. Oh, you're right. I, I mentioned that, right? Maybe um, you, you show a great love to somebody, uh, a, a wonderful smile, but you know they're going through something or maybe they have some negative vibe towards you. But... Uh, that could still break it through and but you're right the person may not reflect it back you know absolutely correct um but there is definitely a better chance uh, of doing that of getting that reflection and reciprocated back to you um you know when you show them that warmth and that love yeah like the sun like it always keeps shining and it you know and then eventually people will feel the warmth yeah so you're right. It, it, it's you know it's not foolproof with human beings. Actually, um, uh, remind me of of a beautiful metaphor uh, of this idea. You know, a horse comes to the water. And what does a horse first do? So a horse doesn't take water, drink the water right away, right? The, the horse first puts their foot in the water. And, and they kind of are, um, what are they doing? Um, they are, um, with their foot, they are pushing the water. What What is, uh, you know, I'm 
not that I know what's in the mind of the horse, but the I, the metaphor we can take from this, you know, today's Hayyam Yayim thought of the day is that from everything that you see and hear, you should learn a lesson in life. Uh, you should learn a lesson in life from and see how that helps you in your divine service. So, so when the horse is, what is the horse doing? Again, whether this is what their mind is thinking or not is not the point. But what do they, they come to the water and they see, what do they see there? They see another horse. They see someone, another horse. So what are they trying to do? Shoo, shoo away the horse. Get rid of this horse. This is my water, right? And what do they do? Because they are so, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, protective of their territory, right? So they put their foot into the water and what do they make the water? Muddy, because you know on the bottom of their uh, uh, of their their hoof is uh, it's it's dirty, and so they're making the water that was clean, beautiful drinking water that they could have taken right away. They don't, because they see the image of 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 a horse there. Now they don't know about mirrors. They don't know water reflects, and they're uh, they so they put their foot in like to shoo away the image. And they do show away the image uh, because, you know, they're making some kind of waves. Um, but, of course, the image comes back. But it comes back dirtier than it was before. So same thing we do. That's a, 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 a metaphor. Again, what, what the horse is thinking, we don't know. But the metaphor for this, at least, is a beautiful metaphor. We see someone else in our territory, in our periphery and our vision and what do we feel that they are a competition for the same thing in my life water of life or whatever it is that i want right and because i see them as a competition to me i'm going to shoo them away but when i shoo them away i'm making my source of life and water that is the source of life dirtier and not cleaner. And in the end, if I would only re remember one thing, that they're a reflection of me. They're not someone who's competing with me, but a reflection of me. How they're a reflection of me? Because how I reflect to them. If I don't see them as uh, combative, I don't see them as a competition, I don't see them as they are out for the same thing that I'm out for, but they, I, uh, they're a reflection of me because I'm a reflection of them, then I'll drink the water right away and I'll have pure drinking water that will give me life. Just a beautiful metaphor. The Alta Rebbe doesn't bring this over here. Um, this is, I don't remember where this is said, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Batya, please share. It, it, it's not Batya, it's actually David, but David. I just want to indicate, um, you know, you're saying that we get a reflection, and you know what, we have a lot of these uh, the habits that maybe we, we don't want to change, and it's and it's our partners or loved ones or people around us are revealing to us either what we, we're doing right or things that we actually need to change, and uh, I, I see that. <laughs> You know, it's 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 important to take note. And again, we're we're we have certain habits that we are used to doing, but it may not be the right thing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Irma says, I know now that what we show others is what is going to be shown to us. We should show to others what God shows to us. Oh, very good. Um, beautiful. Uh, Dana, Beryl, Sina. Would you care to share? Please do, if you'd like to. Um, anybody else here? John, that, that, oh, I know now that that as water reflects back to the face, we show it when we meditate on the love of God shows, it shows to us, even to the most lowly of men, we can reciprocate with great love, even from the heart of a stone toward God. Very good. Thank you, uh, John. Um, so uh, Denise is asking um, Denise is asking 
So Denise is asking, does the reflection of the water have any relation to the saying of water is life? Is that King Solomon's used water specifically to showing us that it was a reflection of our lives? We are who we are and who we can be. Um, very, very good question. Um, well, I, I think simply, you know, the metaphor of water is, you know, in this story with the horse, so we can get that idea. First of all, water does reflect. Water is a source of life. So when we recognize that when we show life, um, right, that we will reflect back life and we'll be given life. So when you show, you know, a loving countenance or just a simple smile sometimes, that is life-giving. So I'm sure it's connected with it. Adi. Hi. Um... So my question is, how do we maintain um, composure, I guess, or how are we supposed to react when that, like, we're not reflected in the other person? This kind of goes along with what V was saying, that sometimes, you know, we can, I don't know, be projecting love or compassion or whatever but we don't get that back. So how do right. we react in that kind of a moment? Excellent question. Excellent question. So um, something we mentioned yesterday, and, and, and I think it's uh, an important thing to always be aware of, um, we have to be careful that we're not uh, living our life trying to control someone else's reaction. Um, then we're not living life. <laughs> then we're living someone else's life. Then we're living because of someone else. We're not living because of ourselves. And and here's the perfect example. If I'm smiling and I'm expecting a smile back, if I'm loving and I'm expecting lovingness back, then I'm not doing it because it's the right thing to do. It's the thing that where I, what I really feel is the, the appropriate thing to do. I'm living because I want a reaction. I want a response back that will make me then happy uh, or make me feel good. And that is, um, believe it or not, is a manipulation ultimately. It may be very, um, very uh, unobstruse. It may not be uh, an obvious one, but in your heart it is, and you may not, the other person might not even know, know it all that, and then feel controlled at all, but um, you're living life on someone else's terms, and that is not a healthy way at all to live. So, yeah, if you're smiling at that person, or if you're showering them with a, a, a something that's loving, and they don't respond back in kind um, ultimately if we did that in truth and we did that because that's really what we felt you know that this is you know what we where we're at then it doesn't matter what the other person's response is now um, because I'm you know it's their sh it's their shortcoming that they can't respond appropriately and as I have an old saying, I don't make other people's problems my problem. If I'm showering that love because that's really what I feel or what I should be doing at that moment, or, or expressing something that is of a connective nature and that person is kind of disconnect, I'm not going to make their problem my problem. The fact that they uh, ha are guarded, the fact that they are not capable of allowing you know, their guard down, uh, for whatever reason, um, that is, again, their problem. I'm living the way I need to live. Now, obviously, in an ideal world, uh, you know, that person will respond and, and so on. But, you know, we, uh, we have to live in our ideal world and, and hopefully it will respond. Now, again, that being said, I think for the most part, if we are sincere about it, mean it. Um, I think it, it does reciprocate 
usually, but again, not always. Uh, not always. And here, remember, just to, it, this is about what God is doing as the king for us, and therefore, what is incumbent about me to reciprocate. So that's the, the you know, where, where we're at with this metaphor, just to, to make sure that we have that in proper perspective. I hope that resonates. Yes, thank you. And since I couldn't um, be there for the remainder of the class yesterday, could I ask one more question? Sure. Sure. Um, so in order to make that genuine in oneself, um, what you need is creating that compassion that you were talking about yesterday. Right. Compassion was the way that you can um, redeem love that you don't have at the moment. Love is about a bond. We want to connect to God. We want to have a connection. But not always we feel connected. Right? So compassion allows us to redeem that connection. Just like in a human relationship when someone in your family, for example, that you should be loving towards. But yeah, they're not so lovable. If you will think about their situation and have compassion, that will redeem the love and you'll be able to uh, express love towards them because the compassion will allow you to redeem the, the love towards that person. So that, that was the, the concept. Is that that's clear? Yes, thank you. Sure, okay, I have here, let me, a moment. Um, Tessa, uh, should we have compassion for criminals? Is there any value in their life? Of course there's value in their life. Just because someone got yesterday, um, you know, um, was found guilty for a criminal act that they, uh, that they you know, engaged in, um, is there value to their life? Yes, of course. Just because someone, even if someone killed another person, that doesn't mean that they don't have value in their life. Of course they do. It doesn't mean they're not, they're responsible for their actions and that there will be justice that needs to be met and served, you know, and without getting into, you know, what happened to the police officer and, and so on and so forth, um, you know, what is uh, justice being uh, properly met and so on. That's not the discussion here. Um, and I'm not going to discuss that, but um, that is there a value to that person's life? Absolutely, there's value. They're creating the image of God and therefore um, need to be dealt with that way. That being said, that doesn't mean that you are not dealing with them in a way, you know, that because of the ills of their way that they need to be dealt with. Um, it's not a you know, contradiction one with the other. I hope that was clear. Florence, uh, so on the flip side, how do we help the horse in the metaphor to recognize his own reflection? <laughs> well, I, I, I hope I express that. When the horse will realize that their reflection is a reflection of me. So, you know, there's a, a saying from the uh, Kotzker Rebbe. If I am me and you are you, and I'm not me, and, I, and you're not you. But if you are me and I am you, then I am me and you are you. So what does that mean? If there's not a piece of you within me, then I'm not really me. If there's not a piece of me within you, then you're not you. But if there's a piece of me and you, so then I am me and you are you. Meaning, I can be whole. When will I be whole? When I see that, when I see you, there's a reflection of me, of you and me. And therefore, you're not my competition, you're not my enemy, and so on. Uh, I'm talking about a Nazi here. We're not talking about a hardened criminal. Let's just talk about your friend, okay? Let's talk about your friend. Let's talk about your fellow Jew in your community, you know, or whatever the case may be. Um, and let's not go into the extremes that we have nothing to do with. I never had a Nazi in my life that I had to deal with. That I have to know that, oh, is that a reflection of me? Should I smile to them? 
a whole different, I don't want to even get there because that's not part of our lives. Let's deal with what's real in our lives. And what's real in our lives are the people in our lives that not necessarily we are showing them a smile, not necessarily we're showing them love because there's uh, water under the bridge that um, might be muddy. And, and part of that muddiness is because I don't see them as a part of me. That's, I, I think, the important part of the metaphor over here. Um, let me just see here. Dawn, give me a moment. Um, I think on Facebook, I don't see anybody else's uh, questions. Or, um, Dawn? Okay. I don't, there's something wrong with my clubhouse over here, Don. I, I gave you the thought I did that you could speak. Can you speak? I don't, there's something wrong. It's not. It's I don't not. see her. It's somehow I think it's glitchy today. Yeah, there's something glitchy today. I see her, and her hand is up, and I and I invited her in. But obviously, it's not working. There's... Yeah, I don't see her in the audience either, so okay. she may have left. Okay. Very good. Uh... I see her in the audience. I don't know why it's not working. Bachi, do you want to allow her to speak? I tried it, and it didn't work. Maybe if you try it, it'll work. Uh... Where is the um, toggle for allowing? She cannot. Only you can because you have the bean. Oh, the, I see. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought as co-host you had that. Okay. Nah. Dawn. Only moderators. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So it's not working. Sorry, uh, Dawn. All right. <laughs> There's I a glitch today. Idea. I love this idea. Can I um make one more qualifier here? That's who's that, Addy? No, it's Vilma. Oh, because Vilma. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, we're both Latinas, but um, so this whole thing about mirrors is centered upon our heart, our heart being clean, our heart being pure, our heart being whole. I think you spoke about that. So when we're whole and we're clean, we'll see a clear reflection. And if we're not, then we're seeing something that we need to fix within our own self, in our heart. Um, we can't fix other people, of course, and we can't expect other people to, like, perfectly always mirror our own, you know, hearts. Right. Because everybody has their own heart, and every heart is not the same, in, you know, vibrating in the same frequency and feeling the same things, right? Right. So the onus is always on us to be the best, you know, heart-centered person that we can be. And this is how I've learned to show up. Anytime I show up in any new environment, because I've traveled a lot, because I've lived in different places, because I've worked um, all over the United States, um, the thing that I've observed, because I'm very observant, is that people will always rise up to the level that you show up in. So if I show up all like crazy and depressed, like people, that'll affect other people. But I never show up like that. I show up as my best self. I make sure I get sleep. I do all these things so that my heart is happy to be there, you know, and that'll show. And eventually people will reflect that. Excellent. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't have anything over here. All right, I think that's it. Anybody have an I know now that? I already mentioned a couple over here. Anybody else has? That's wonderful. And if not, we will continue. Um, we will continue the conversation tomorrow. By the way, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, or Daylight Saving Time right now. Um, 
Monday through Friday. I just see that Julie, you asked that question on Facebook. Just make sure that there's um, clarity on that. And um, Sundays is at, at 1030. Okay. I want to thank everybody for joining. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time. In today's class, actually, we have Abigail is with us. Oh, wow. On Instagram, Abigail Mazeltov. She just had a baby girl yesterday. Abigail um, and Moshe Genun here in Montreal had a baby, um, a baby girl. Thank God, a healthy, a healthy mother and a healthy baby. So uh, today's class is um, in in honor of the birth of the baby. Also, um, today we have a yard site that was uh, uh, so sponsored. Also, today's class in the yard site of Gittel Bas Pinchas uh, Stavis, uh, Harold mother. So and the shaman should go from strength to strength, and um, we thank him for that. And, uh, and Abigail Mazeltov, Mazeltov, and um, we look forward for you being to join us. Uh, I guess you're already joining. Look at that, having a child, and still connected to learning Tanya. That's a, that's amazing. Kol kavod. And um, just a reminder: this afternoon, Rabbi Mendy at 12 noon on zoom and i'm at 1245 learning and actually today we'll also have it on clubhouse our teaching at 1245 which will be jewish ethics pure vote so uh look forward for everybody to join and a reminder two weeks today will begin the ultimate of all uh teachings about mashiach this is something fascinating course six-week course and everybody, um, I um, urge you to uh, sign up and to join. This is the ultimate teachings of Jewish teachings, uh, changing the world for good, a world that's redeemed, a world of good that we all uh, are participating in creating. So a lot of good things are happening. By the way, many of you have shared your email with me so you get notifications of the various things that we uh, that I'm doing. And, uh, if I don't have it, please uh, private message me your email so we can keep you afoot of all the news that's fit to print. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day. God bless you all.